When proving a mathematical statement is tautologically true, you might start with a set of premises but have to make deductions and deduce several new statements which could also be added to the set of premises before you can finally deduce the conclusion. So in this lesson, we're going to talk about a few rules that you can use to make deductions. These rules are fairly simple and straightforward to use, and each one will follow with an actual uh, example and words that you could use when you're making an argument to see what that sounds like. So, um, if P and Q are both true statements, then we can conclude that P is a true statement. So in other words, P and Q implies P. For example, if I want to know it's hot outside and I check the weather, and the weather report says it's hot and cloudy, then I would have answered my question, I know it is hot. And similarly, if P and Q are both true, we can conclude that Q is true. So if I want to know whether it's raining and I check the weather, and the weather report says it's cold and it's raining, then I know it's raining. If P is true, then we can conclude that P or Q is true. So say I order a vegetable lover's pizza with all sorts of vegetables, and my friend asks, will the pizza have vegetables or pepperonis? Then I can answer yes, because at least one of those statements is true. It's certainly going to have vegetables. If P or Q is true, and P is not true, then I know that Q is true. So to say P or Q, and not P, then I know Q. So for example, my professor said he will meet students at the coffee shop or in his office. I go and she's not at the coffee shop, therefore I can conclude that she must be in her office. If P is true and P implies Q, then we can conclude that Q is also true. So P and P implies Q implies altogether that Q is true. So if it's hot, it is hot outside right now, and I know if it's hot outside, then my ice sculpture will melt. Therefore, my ice sculpture is melting. Uh, if P implies Q and Q is false, then I conclude that P is false. So if it's hot outside, my ice sculpture will melt. But my ice sculpture isn't melting. Therefore, it must not be hot outside. If P implies Q and Q implies R, then taken together as one statement, that means that P implies R. So if I buy an expensive car, then I will have to make high monthly payments. And if I have to make high monthly payments, then I will be stressed out. So if I buy this expensive car, I will be stressed out. If P or Q is true, and P implies R, and Q implies R, then R must be true. So that is, if I know at least one of P or Q is true, and P would imply R, and Q would also imply R, then R's got to be true somehow. So I know the dessert served tonight will be chocolate or strawberry. If it's chocolate, I'll like it. If it's strawberry, I'll like it. So one way or another, I'm going to like the dessert that they serve tonight. So um, when making mathematical arguments, we're going to make these arguments in words. And this is what an argument's actually going to sound like. But all of these argument forms are valid forms when making a um, mathematical argument to show that a mathematical statement is tautologically true. So let's do an argument broken down in symbols, which shows whenever you might have to combine different rules to make a conclusion. So suppose I know the following. R would imply P, P or Q. I also know that Q is false, and I know that R is true. So from this information, can I conclude P? Well, by the fifth rule above, which says uh, P and P implies Q implies Q, I could say R, which I know is true, and I also know that R implies P or Q. Combining these two, I know that then P or Q must be true. And so therefore, P or Q becomes another premise in my argument. Now I have four statements. R implies P or Q, I have not Q, R, and now I also know P or Q. Well, combining the statements P or Q and not Q, that tells me by rule 4, P is true. Because I know P or Q is true and that Q is false, therefore P must be true. And therefore, the following is a tautology. R implies P or Q and not Q, and R altogether implies P. 
even though when I was deducing p, I had to introduce some intermediate statements. So you can't uh, use these rules to show that you can then not draw a conclusion. And so um, therefore, if a statement is false, what you actually end up having to do is introducing a counterexample. And that is a set of conditions that falsifies the statement. So say I have p or q implies r, I know not q, and I know r. Can I conclude p? And it turns out you can't, but you could try to make arguments all day, and you'll never get to p. But that doesn't show that somehow you can't ever get to p, because you might deduce more and more and more statements. However, if I let q be false, r be true, p be true, uh, oh, and p is either true or false, sorry, uh, all the statements will be true. But I cannot conclude p. So therefore, this statement is not a tautology. Um, OK, so let's look at this in a little bit more detail. If q is false, then not q is true. So that makes that true. r is true, so that makes that true. And if p is false, then we have a um, false or false implies r. And false implies anything is true, so that makes that true. But we get all of this is true, and true, and true is true. And that implies p, which could be false. And this whole thing is then false. Which means it's not a tautology, because there are conditions that falsify the statement.